You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and I am here with a guest today who um, is a regular over on the Discord server. So I am going to let them introduce themselves and tell you, you know, their Discord username and where else you can find them online. Hi, um, my name is Janelle. Um, my Discord username is just Janelle. <laughs> um, you you can find me on Instagram or Tumblr. I use Tumblr more for witchy stuff. Um, it should be under um, bucomoon.tumblr.com. <laughs> but yeah, um, well, like I said, my name's Janelle. Um, I've been practicing for about three years and I consider myself a sea witch and since it is Scorpio season and I know you're a Scorpio too yeah. um, I'm a I'm a Scorpio sun Pisces moon and Gemini rising <laughs> oh look at all those water signs in your chart <laughs> um, yeah, yeah let's go <laughs> yeah, I love I love Scorpio season <laughs> this is our time to shine exactly <laughs> Well, I am excited to talk to you about sea witchcraft and water witchcraft, because that is something that a lot of people are interested in regarding, regardless of what their sun sign is. Um, I think water just calls to a lot of people and sea witchcraft in particular always seems super interesting and something that I am not that familiar with because I am obviously landlocked here in Illinois. I have Lake Michigan, but that's about it. So I have never worked any sort of sea witchcraft. So I'm very excited to chat just sort of, you know, about your practice and how you even got into sort of see witchcraft and water witchcraft. Where did that all start for you or witchcraft in general? Where did that start with for you? Well, um, there's like, I have like two versions of how I started, which is um, <laughs> kind of funny because I feel like this, this applies to everybody really where, um, so the first version of how I technically started it, it's kind of embarrassing um I was watching like um a YouTube video it was probably fake but it, it was kind of entertaining um either way it was a guy he he bought like a dipic box on eBay <laughs> and um and he's like I'm gonna totally vlog what happens to me and like apparently the dipic box was cursed long story short this guy started getting a bunch of weird hauntings happening at his house and when he couldn't take it anymore <laughs> um he said that he hired like some like a quote-unquote white witch to do a ritual for his house and the last thing that he showed was like the dipic box and he opened it up and there was some selenite in it and he was like yeah the witch told me to keep the selenite and i guess the haunting stopped so from there i kind of fell under a rabbit hole with like oh what's a white witch um what's a witch in general and it kind of like also got me interested like don't people normally call priests for that and I've been falling in that rabbit hole ever since but um the second story is like I guess um the type that a lot of witches can really relate to where um like do you ever like get this feeling where um you're doing something and something about it like feels like okay I don't need to I don't mean to exaggerate but it feels like very like very magical like something about it like very very much invigorates you and makes you feel like I don't know like almost euphoric because um like ever since I was little I remember I do this thing where whenever we go to the beach um my family and I uh, we live in California so um we, we would go to the beach and then I'd like I'd run straight to the water and I'd dig my toes in into like the wet sand and then I'd watch like the um like the tide kind of coming in really fast and then kind of retreat very fast too and it made me feel really cool like I'd be like whoa it's like I'm controlling the water and I'd feel like so happy I'd be splashing around i and then so I'd kind of notice like other kids would be screaming because they're like, oh my God, it's so cold. But 
I'd kind of be like, wow, look at this. It's like so energizing and so calming at the same time. And I was like digging my feet in and feeling the sea foam tickle me. And at the same time, it was cold, but it was still refreshing and it woke me up. But at the same time, I was like very relaxed at the same time. Like that that's like me. But every time I touch water, which is kind of dramatic, but I mean, <laughs> it it's like, I didn't know how to describe that feeling at first. And I look back at it now and I'm just like, this whole time I've been grounding, cleansing and, <laughs> and energizing myself ever since I was little. So I guess in a way I've always been a sea witch, but I've never really given it a name until like three years ago, if that really makes sense. Yeah, of course it does. Oh, that's such a cute story. Okay, first of all, both of them are cute stories. I love the YouTube video. That's so funny. And you're definitely not the only one. And even now I like get sucked into videos like that. So I I love it. I love it. You're like, you know what? This guy might be a little crazy with his curse curses, but in general, what a fun like video to watch and be like, I want to know more about witchcraft and, and selenite and everything else. So um uh, that is so cute and hilarious that it actually ended up being selenite because it, that is associated with the moon which is associated with the tides and water and the sea and everything so super interesting there too and I think that you are not the only sea witch who is that drawn to water from such a young age especially given your uh star signs because you are heavily watering your chart there uh but I love that that is how you ground and get your energy and recharge uh super interesting. I love that. Do you use water like, only the sea or do you use water in the rest of your practice? Like if you're at home, I mean, you are in California, so sea is everywhere, but if you're like at home, do you like collect sea water or do you use tap water sometimes? Well, um, the, the thing is, uh, <laughs> although I do live in California, I don't always get to be at the beach. Like, I wish I could go out every day <laughs> and just, like, dive into the water and just be like, oh, yeah, the, I'm in my element. I, I could, like, literally ground right now. But, um, like, realistically and, like, for literally any witch, it, it's sadly not that glamorous. So what I do try <laughs> to do is, like, kind of keep this mindset where, like... Um, especially for people that aren't near the ocean I, I find that like a lot of people that do want to be sea witches or like any water witch really um they feel like oh I'm nowhere near the ocean so I can't be a sea witch or an ocean witch or a river lake witch but like something that I, I've kind of come to learn is that like like you are literally 60% ocean you the water is in you like <laughs> um <laughs> like it I, I kind of worded that funny but like it literally is it's it's it runs through your veins your blood is like practically water um people when people cry that's salt water that that's literally the ocean coming out of you and I guess that's also why water is so associated with emotion because um you know it comes out of us and um we we sweat the ocean we cry the ocean we uh, and I feel like that that kind of mindset is very comforting especially when people feel like so far away I guess from like being magical because I know a lot of witches have those days where they're like oh I don't feel like witchy or magical enough or I, I feel very um exhausted or drawn out and I don't feel as powerful but like something that I've learned a lot is that like it's it's literally in every person it's in every witch and um things like your emotions and your intent and your willpower and stuff it all kind of derives like from from in you and like a lot of emotional water stuff so like so I guess in short I like to say that you are part of the ocean and the ocean is part of you and like in a bigger picture nature you are a part of nature and nature is also a part of you and um so what I like to do like 
just day by day um, besides just working with water and using water is um, since I am like a super emotional person, um, I consider things like shadow work or just like journaling or tarot, things that are like emotionally thought provoking. Um, I consider that see witchcraft because like it, it involves your emotions. And um, I think that um, emotions and intent very much tie in together. And um, what I do for spell work, I don't recommend it for everybody because um, it is very, um, like you really have to put yourself in that emotional mindset because you normally for spell work, um, people, it's, people would kind of like go to the safe route where they're like, hey, don't put too much of your emotions into your spell work or else it'll like completely like mess it up. But I feel like after doing a lot of like shadow work or like checking in with yourself and knowing like your boundaries and limits and putting yourself in like a safe, comfortable space, um, actually using your emotions is very helpful, especially with um, establishing like intent. Um, I kind of also want to share a story of when I used this and it actually worked. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> Definitely. We want to hear that for sure. <laughs> yeah. It, it was actually kind of crazy. So, um, so I was doing like a job spell and um, what I did was uh, I, I have like this Nautilus shell and then I filled it with coins and then I put um, like some jade in it for, for money and stuff. And um, so I, kind of meditated and like grounded myself and did all of that and I kind of thought about how badly I wanted this one specific job and I thought about why I wanted it so much and um what I'll feel like if I do get it and um and just stuff like that and um since I I cry very easily um it, okay this might sound a little weird but um I kind of got to that meditative point where like yes this is the intent for the spell and this is how badly I want it and then when I cried I kind of let like my tears fall into like the seashell filled with coins and then uh I kind of um after that I kind of relaxed and like closed down the whole my whole spell mode or whatever <laughs> and then I wrote in my journal that the intent for this was in three weeks I'm gonna <laughs> get a call back saying that I got the job so I didn't get the call back but I decided to call them and um what happened was when I called them uh the I, I had already gone in for an interview but I was like wondering if there was still an update about it and um when I called it was the guy that interviewed me and I was like I was saying hey this is Janelle um I was wondering if there was an update about like the job opening and he was like oh Janelle that's kind of, that's really funny your resume is right in front of me right now and I was oh, like man. what the but then I tried to play it cool you know I was like oh ha, so funny <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was like yeah, I guess this is a sign, right? Um, so I'll I'll call you later about your availability, and um, and pretty much he he hired me then and there, and then like before he ended the call, he was like, "Dang, the universe works in mysterious ways, right?" And I was like, "Haha, totally." <laughs> <laughs> no, I made it work that way. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, that that was like, that was an example of how I kind of channeled my emotions, and in a way, like the ocean running through me huh? but um no that, I mean that's that's really true like because you really attach that to yourself because tears are technically a tag lock we, we mostly talk about nail clippings or hair or sometimes blood which puts people off but tears are obviously a part of your body too so that is you connecting yourself directly with that spell so that's really yeah if you're a crier that's a really powerful way to do that right because like I cry so much and I'm just like you know what I might as well utilize this and I'm kind of surprised <laughs> that no one's ever like used tears because like like you said it's like there's blood there's nails there's hair but then why not something as like 
I don't know, I guess soft as tears. Like it and the intent behind it, like when you think, oh, hair, nails, blood, it's like you you kind of sacrifice that through like pain or bad things. But like I guess in a way when it's tears and it's like I don't know, like I guess getting tears out of like yourself, it's and also like um depending on like the types of tears, you know, like happy tears sad tears the I want this really badly tears like the intent behind it it's also very powerful and that's also why I really like water because it's so versi versatile versatile because like I, I don't know I, I just really like it because like you mentioned in like the water element episode that you guys did um you could use it like steam you could freeze it you could use lake water river water um, ocean water different types of stuff um rain water things like that and um I don't know it's just I just really relate to the element of water and um the way that a lot of it sometimes is also very misunderstood because <laughs> normally when I talk to my friends about the ocean they're like oh my god it's so scary it's so big and vast and you don't know what's in there but like at the same time, like being able to sort of meditate on that and kind of conquer that fear. And I guess in a way, me surrounding myself in something that's so unknown, yet something that I really love is just kind of like very meaningful to me in a way. Because it like having that sort of stuff to think about kind of makes me feel like, wow, I am a witch. Yeah. <laughs> No, that that is very true about the ocean because I am one of those people, even though I am a water sign, I am afraid of the ocean. I mean, not necessarily everything in it, but like I don't go in the ocean, even if I'm on the coast, I don't go in the ocean and I don't go in Lake Michigan because my uh, dead body to body of water ratio is zero. I do not go swimming where there, I mean, the ocean and the Lake Michigan definitely have dead bodies in there. So I don't go in there. I'll go in a pool because there's no dead bodies. In right. There. So, <laughs> and, but, and like, I totally get that. <laughs> my ratio is zero. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am not much of a going into the water person, but I do like, yeah. you know, working with it, but absolutely. I understand that fear that comes along with, yeah. COVID, and that is something I think even for sea witches who are really drawn to it, that is like part mm -hmm. of it. That's like the vastness of the ocean and not understanding like everything that's in there is part of the magic of sea witchcraft. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, it, you don't have to literally go into the ocean, but kind of seeing like your own practice that way and just life in general, it's just, it, it's very much made me feel more understood. Cause like, um, I've always been kind of like shamed for like being super sensitive or super, super emotional. And, but being able to take something that I used to think was a weakness and turn it into a strength I feel like is is very powerful and uh, I know that like there's a lot of other witches out there and a lot of sea witches out there that um or just witches in general like when they feel doubtful like just the it's in you and it's always been in you and I, I feel like that's just like the main message that I like to tell people because I used to think, oh, I'm not, I'm not like a good witch. I'm not powerful and stuff like that. But like, like, and this kind of goes back to the whole story about my, my job spell. I'm just like, I literally cried for a job. <laughs> but, um, but I'll be all the earth signs listening to this are like what are you crazy people talking about you cry over everything like I don't understand but all the water signs are like yep yep <laughs> yeah and so um basically uh other than that for like my like what I do on a daily basis or just for my practice in general I just get anything that's that I relate to water which is like I try to get crystals that are like water soluble like personally I do not want to touch malachite <laughs> <laughs> fair fair enough and, um or I just like 
of course like the obvious things like showers and baths those are a good time <laughs> and or just using things like salt or the moon or just anything that um you find personal to you and kind of just like pretty much what any witch does but i'm just like i'm gonna add a bit of water to it because <laughs> <laughs> then again it it like circles back to the whole like whatever you find meaningful and personal to you um it i believe that that's the most powerful thing like you could follow any correspondence on any like book or whatever you see online when you do research but when it personally connects to you and like maybe even to the point where it emotionally provokes you in a good way in a good and safe way um i feel like that's a lot more powerful in in spell work and practice than just like something that you see but there's still nothing wrong with like using what you see online as long as it really does like work for you and it 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 feels like it it's right for you you know yeah i agree with that and I mean, there's so many different correspondences associated with water that it's all kind of ends up being trial and error anyway so even if you do read about it in a book or hear about it you know on this podcast uh you can try it out and you're gonna i think learn pretty quickly whether or not you are particularly attached to it exactly and another thing that i read from a book that i also really agreed with is that um whenever like you go to example for example like to a beach or like any body of water it's like a place where um all four elements meet in one spot like the the sun is the fire um the wind is the air and like the earth and the water meeting together like i i guess like to me i consider that like a very powerful spot to do like cleanse or ground or do spell work or stuff like that but um also just like filling a bowl of water and putting it in front of you is just as good <laughs> yeah very true so other than you know being exactly at the sea which is not practical for every day um what does sort of like a day in your life or week month um what are some things that you do regularly in your witchcraft practice that are associated with the sea water anything like that um well i'm trying to think besides you know showering and drinking water um, <laughs> which totally counts um, those count yeah um i have a lot of ocean themed things like i, I really like doing tarot because it does help me reflect more on my emotions and uh, also a lot of my tarot is ocean themed but like um anything that makes me kind of reflect on myself because since water is like also technically like a reflection I kind of see it in a way where um if I reflect on my emotions more it helps me ground better and makes helps me know more about myself so I do a lot of journaling and um like I said tarot or simple things like just checking in on myself like hey are you okay do you need a break? Stuff like that. Um, I'm a very huge advocate about mental health and like really um, um, focusing on when you really do need to take a break and things like that. And um, I, I just do, do a lot of shadow work pretty much and or just journaling because sometimes shadow work is like intense. So just simple yeah, stuff like that as long as the intent as long as the intent is there where you you check in with yourself and your emotions and um stuff like that because um I feel like because as a sensitive person you and you feel too much sometimes it, it's nice to kind of focus on thing feeling something else like maybe focusing on oh the sun feels nice on my skin today or um I don't know it's just I don't know how to really explain it it's just because um it never really physically you never really physically have to have water there because like I said the ocean's in everybody but things like um our emotions and 
um, ourselves, like we tend to forget about ourselves a lot. And um, I don't know. Well, <laughs> sorry. I, it, just long story short, I, I focus on um, checking in with myself and my mental health. No, that's smart. Absolutely necessary. Uh, and necessary for everyone, whether that's, you know, you're doing that through water or not, but absolutely emotions are associated with water. I think we both <laughs> know that really well. Um, yeah. I'm a super emotional person too, but since I am predominantly Scorpio, I push it all down. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody else knows that I am an emotional person. That is like right, same. Like I always <laughs> not for anybody else's business, <laughs> right? When, whenever I um, whenever I remember when I was little and I heard that Scorpio was a water element, I was like, that makes a lot more sense. And then I have this joke where I just tell people, yeah, I'm a gasoline sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. I feel like just when you when we talk about like the bottom of the ocean being scary that's Scorpio <laughs> when you're like associating Scorpio with a particular water body of water we're the bottom exactly. of the ocean and we're, we're a little creepy <laughs> yeah but I think Scorpios are like the most prevalent sign so I think people listening to this understand that we're a little right bit, it's okay <laughs> oh yeah and that also reminds me of like another water correspondence thing that I heard about a lot of I've never tried it myself, but there's like, um, you know how there's like different levels of the ocean. There's like, um, like the surface, and then, um, like, the twilight zone and the midnight zone or whatever. It's kind of, I don't know. It, I I find that very interesting, especially with like grounding or, um, centering and stuff like that. Oh yeah, there's so many different layers that you can tap into, like different power that comes from each of those exactly and um usually I I also use um I I would base those levels on like animal correspondences or like stuff that you would find in the ocean like seashells or like um plants and stuff like that I haven't dove in <laughs> dove <laughs> into it too much but I it has crossed my mind oh yeah there's a lot of animals that you could work with you know people think of fish but there's also sharks and dolphins and octopus and all kinds of things that live in the ocean that have a lot of their own powerful energy that can be tapped into yeah exactly so if somebody were listening to this and they are just starting out um in witchcraft and they're really looking into they're called by the sea or looking into water witchcraft what advice do you have for somebody who is just a beginner and just starting out well two main things you don't need to be near a body of water because you are the ocean and the ocean doesn't have to be just seashells water swimming it could also be things like how you feel and what makes you feel certain things is because emotion itself very much feels intent yeah I like that I because that's true a lot of the advice given uh especially to beginners is to take your emotion out of it because you might be too emotional for spell work and that's true sometimes there are some times where like especially when it comes to more baneful magic that like you yeah, are in the exactly. moment and you're like just jumping into it and not thinking it through like that's not the best idea but if you've like thought it through and you're emotional like for your job for example if you're emotional about that that should feed your spell work because that makes it more powerful and that's what ties it to you and I think that's great also for people who aren't great at um visualizing or being you know really specific about their intent if they're fueling it with their emotions that is fueling the intent without having to be so specific like you knew when you're crying exactly what you wanted out of that and exactly what job and how that would work out for you um because yeah. it figures into it yeah and uh I feel like I guess that's what I was trying to say earlier is um like 
when you do take the time to work on your emotions, you and like recognize and separate intent and emotion, you that's when you could really utilize it in your magic and like tell the difference between do I really want this or am I just being emotional right now like <laughs> um <laughs> like because it is true like especially for baneful magic like it's very easy to like use all of that very intense emotion and put it into intent that you really don't mean to do in the long run but like once you do master your emotions and I guess that water element um, in general, then I think using your emotions in a safe and like very aware way does very much help with like magic and practice and like yourself as a person as a whole. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we are nearing the end of our time here. <laughs> so before I um, cut you off, uh, is there oh, any- no worries. Is there any last things that you want to share with the audience that we did not cover? I feel like we cover a lot. <laughs> I think we covered a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. And listeners, Janelle is very active in the Discord server and answers lots of questions and you know, shares lots of things. So if you have any specific questions or need help sort of getting started down this path of sea witchcraft or water witchcraft or anything that we didn't cover today, then don't be afraid to reach out. I will make sure that I tag her specifically so you can, you know, chat if you want, send any, you know, messages or anything. So I will have all of that linked in the show notes at witchwednesdays.com. If you have any questions, definitely reach out. But Janelle, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me and and thanks for letting me talk about water. <laughs> <laughs> any Anytime, anytime. <laughs> Well, listeners, that's all I have for you this week. I will see you in the next one. Need even more? Subscribe to Patreon and YouTube for exclusive bonus content. Order a themed witchcraft box every month through Witch Wednesdays on Etsy. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.